Open, O Lord, our lips to praise thy holy name. Cleanse also our hearts from vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten our understanding and kindle our affection, that we may say this office worthily, attentively, and devoutly, and may be counted worthy to be heard in the presence of thy divine majesty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, in union with that divine intention, wherewith thou didst offer praise to God on earth, we offer this service unto thee. Our opening hymn, processional hymns, hymn number 268.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thus saith the high lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, <clears throat> to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble or cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought, at all times, humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, <coughs> Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter, with a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life, life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> o Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world. 
and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This morning's psalm is psalm number 91. And that is found on page 454 in your Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Whoso dwelleth under the defense of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, Thou art my hope and my stronghold, my God. In him will I trust. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunter, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall defend thee under his wings, and thou shalt be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness and truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for any terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. For the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the sickness that destroyeth in the noonday. A thousand shall fall beside thee, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Yea, with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the ungodly. For thou, Lord, art my hope. Thou hast set thine house of defense very high. There shall no evil happen unto thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. But he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, that thou hurt not thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt go up <coughs> upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou tread under thy feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. Yea, I am with him in trouble. I will deliver him, and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Here beginneth the 22nd verse of the third chapter of the Book of Lamentations. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust, if so be there be, may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, Yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willing, willingly, nor grieve the children of men. Here endeth the first lesson. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Here beginneth the 24th verse of the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his lord. It is enough for the dis disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his lord. If they had called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing coming that shall not be revealed, and nothing hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, 
but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them not, shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. For ye not therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whatsoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Here endeth the second lesson. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father, of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ, thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, Thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge, we therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, let me never be confounded. Please be seated. <clears throat> the holy, excuse me, the epistles written in the eighth chapter of the book of uh, Paul's epistle to the Romans, excuse me, beginning with the 18th verse. 
I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty. Praise it and exalt it above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness. Praise it and exalt it above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim. Praise it and exalt it above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom. Praise it and exalt it above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven. Praise it and exalt it above all forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, <coughs> and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Holy Gospel is written in the fourth chapter of St. Luke, beginning with the 36th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but every one that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite. Cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to, to thee. thee. Christ. <clears throat> Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets 
which have been since the world began, that we should be safe from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, <clears throat> and grant us thy salvation. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that Thou being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Eternal God, through whose mighty power our fathers won their liberties of old, grant, we beseech thee, that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain these liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, 
who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, good morning. Good morning. This is the uh, fourth Sunday after Trinity. It's also the day after Independence Day, which was celebrated yesterday all across our country. And I hope all of you had a wonderful day off, maybe some good barbecue, maybe had a chance to either light some fireworks off or go watch some fireworks. Uh, Chris and I had a pretty quiet day around the house yesterday, just took some time off. I fiddled out in the garden. <laughs> My beans are coming along quite nicely, so I have about three big planters with towers of uh, pole beans out here, and uh, my, my uh, excuse me, my yellow crooknecks doing quite well as well. When we downsized, I lost most of my garden space, so I picked the two vegetables that I did. Oh, I also have some cherry tomatoes out there. So <laughs> as the season goes along, I'll be showing up on Sundays with some bags of beans that you can all help yourself to take on home. Um, Announcement-wise, as I indicated in my email last week, this is our last broadcast live stream from our home. Um, I was just telling Chris, we started this thing back up in Palm, I think it was Palm, Palm Sunday. Sunday. Palm Sunday, with some technical glitches that happened. It was our, it was our maiden voyage, but we managed to recover any landing you can walk away from. is a good one. But uh, this is going to be the last one. Uh, tomorrow, Chief and his friend Fletch are going to stop by the house in the afternoon, and we're going to... We'll take all this down and we're going to load it up and take it back over to the hall and we're going to set the church back up in the hall. And next Sunday will be our first uh, service back at our beloved Grange Hall. Uh, today normally would be a Holy Communion Day, but since we're going back to the hall next Sunday, I figured let's just do some, a nice morning prayer. So that way next Sunday we come back, we'll do communion, uh, minister to everybody. I laid out in my email you know, how we're going to do this. Yes, we'll be in masks. Yes, we'll maintain social distancing, but we'll be back in our hall. Jason, I'll be uh, chatting with him this week, but I'm sure we'll be making a big noise, lots of music. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, we've, we've been using some, uh, some um, resources online to provide the sound. And last Sunday, we really figured out how to get the sound to sound better. So. Now that we've figured that out, we'll be going back to the hall. We will be recording the services at the hall. So after the service, we'll come home, we'll upload it to the YouTube, our YouTube uh, channel, and then those of you who still aren't able to attend the live, excuse me, the services at the hall, will be able to, uh, to take part in the services, Dave, and those of you who uh, still aren't able to, to be with us. Uh, other announcements, Jory yesterday, she uh, annually with the American Cancer Society Relay for Life, she does, does a marathon walk. And uh, yesterday, I believe she did 26.3 miles. Yeah, woohoo! Woohoo! Way to go, Jory. Uh, that's the good news. <laughs> the bad news is she and uh, Scott went out to see some fireworks last night. And on their way back, they were walking back home. She fell and landed on her elbows, and the pain was so bad in her right elbow, from what I understand, they thought she might have broken it. So 3 o'clock this morning, they're in the emergency room. Uh, thank goodness it wasn't broken. 
but she's uh, home, she's bound up, she's on painkillers. So let's pray for her recovery, thanksgiving that it wasn't broken, but let's pray for her speedy recovery on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I think the announcement wise, oh, I was going to say, the uh, presiding bishop this week, after uh, conferring with his house of bishops, has decided to postpone the provincial synod until next year. That was uh, set to meet in North Carolina, but North Carolina is having their issues as well with COVID. And so they weren't be able to get definitive guidelines for the meeting at, at their uh, the hotel there. We had already, the Diocese of the West and the Diocese of Mid-America had already said, we're not coming, we're not getting on airplanes. So His Grace decided, we're just going to go ahead, postpone it, we'll, we'll just do it next year, which is probably what we're going to do with the Diocese of the West. I'll be calling a meeting of our standing committee uh, either later this month or the first of next month, and I'm sure we're going to make that same decision because we need to be at the, at the Provincial Synod because we'll be installing a new presiding bishop so uh, we can handle the, the business of the diocese over a Zoom call or something like that. So I'll let you know, but for all of you uh, delegates who graciously stepped up to volunteer to attend. Thank you for uh, your, for doing that, but we'll do it again next year. Um, anything else I forgot there, sweetie? I don't think so. Why don't you come up here? I would like just to have, oh, come on. Okay, I'll move up this, I'll move up this, I'll move up this <laughs> lost close. She's in her director's garb, but <laughs> how close yeah. are you? How no. close are you? Here we go. I want to- See, the camera adds 10 Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. I want to thank my bride and producer and director here for assisting all of us, all of these weeks, uh, putting this thing on. I mean, she moves everything out of the kitchen, sets it up. She gets the flowers. We have more hyacinths out there. She runs all this stuff. Hydrangeas. Hydrangeas. <laughs> Sorry. I'm thinking about keeping up appearances. It's, it's, a, it's a British cup. But I want to thank her very much, and I hope you would You're all also, very welcome. Uh, for everything you've done. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Okay. Do something a little different today for our sermon. Last week you got my rector's mid-year uh, report. Um, lots of stuff going on in the world, lots of stuff going on in the country. Uh, you, all you have to do is just turn on the TV, which I don't even like to do anymore. Recommend against. <laughs> recommend against watching the news and you can't get away from everything that's going on 24-7 social media. We all have access to it uh, anytime we want. Uh, it's a mess out there. It's a mess. And again, uh, I'm in Costco eight hours a day wearing my mask and I see the stress and stuff going on. Um, even though people this week are loading up for their um, uh, Fourth of July barbecues and everything, big orders, lots of fireworks going out. The tension is still there. And uh, there's just stuff going on out there. Peppers are short, passions are high. And, you know, Chris and I were chatting, I wonder 10 years from now, as we look back upon this year, you know, where we will be and what we will think about everything that's going on. We are sojourners. We're passing through this world. We know this is temporary. We know what's waiting for us, but we're also human beings and we're subject to those passions and to what's going on in the world. We all have an opinion, but I thought, it would be nice to go back a few decades to a different time in this country on this same day and see what the president of that time had to say on that day and how a portion of what he had to say was very prophetic as to where we are on this 4th of July or 5th of July, this uh, Independence Day weekend. July 4th, 1986. My fellow Americans, in a few moments the celebration will begin in New York Harbor. It's going to be quite the show. I was just looking over the preparations and thinking about a saying that we had back in Hollywood about never doing a scene with kids or animals because they'd steal the scene every time. So you can rest assured I won't even think about trying to compete with a fireworks display, especially on the 4th of July. My remarks tonight will be brief, but it's worth remembering, that <clears throat> worth remembering that all the celebration of this day is rooted in history. It's recorded that shortly after the Declaration of Independence was signed in Philadelphia, 
celebrations took place throughout the land, and many of the former colonists, they were just starting to call themselves Americans, set off cannons and marched in fife and drum parades. What a contrast with the sober scene that had taken place a short time earlier in Independence Hall. Fifty-six men came forward to sign the parchment. It was noted at the time that they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honors. And that was more than rhetoric. Each of those men knew the penalty for high treason to the crown. We must all hang together, Benjamin Franklin said, or assuredly, we will all hang separately. And John Hancock, it is said, wrote his signature in large script so King George could see it without his spectacles. <laughs> they were brave. They stayed brave through all the bloodshed of the coming years. Their courage created a nation built on a universal claim to human dignity, on the proposition that every man, woman, and child had a right to a future of freedom. For just a moment, let us listen to the words again. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Last night when we rededicated Miss Liberty and relit her torch, we reflected on all the millions who came here in search of the dream of freedom inaugurated in Independence Hall. We reflected, too, on their courage in coming great distances and settling in a foreign land, and then passing on to their children and their children's children the hope symbolized in this statue here just behind us. The hope that is America. It is a hope that someday every people and every nation of the world would know the blessings of liberty. And it's the hope of millions all around the world. In the last few years, I've spoken at Westminster to the mother of parliaments, at Versailles, where French kings and world leaders have made war and peace. I've been to the Vatican in Rome, the Imperial Palace in Japan, and the ancient city of Beijing. I've seen the beaches of Normandy and stood again with those boys at Point to Hope, who long ago scaled the heights and with, at that time, Lisa Zanata Hen, who was at Omaha Beach for the father she loved, the father who had once dreamed of seeing again the place where he and so many brave others had landed on D-Day. But he had died before he could make that trip, and she made it for him. And, Dad, she had said, I will always be proud. And I've seen the successors to these brave men, the young Americans in uniform all over the world, young Americans like you here tonight who manned the mighty USS Kennedy, and the Iowa, and other ships of the line. I can assure you, you out there who are listening, that these young men are like their fathers and their grandfathers, just as willing, just as brave, and we can be just as proud. But our prayer tonight is that the call for their courage will never come, and that it's important for us, too, to be brave. Not so much bravery of the battlefield, I mean the bravery of brotherhood. All through our history, <clears throat> our presidents and leaders have spoken of national unity and warned us that the real obstacle to moving forward the boundaries of freedom, the only permanent danger to the hope that is America, comes from within. It's easy enough to dismiss this as a kind of familiar exhortation. Yet the truth is that even two of our greatest founding fathers, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, once learned this lesson late in life. <clears throat> they worked so closely together in Philadelphia for independence. But once that was gained and a government formed, something called partisan politics began to get in the way. After a bitter and divisive campaign, Jefferson defeated Adams for the presidency in 1800. <clears throat> and the night before Jefferson's inauguration, Adams slipped away to Boston, disappointed, brokenhearted, and very bitter. For years their estrangement lasted. 
But when they both had retired, Jefferson at 68 to Monticello and Adams at 76 to Quincy, they began through their letters to speak again to each other. Letters that discussed almost every conceivable subject. Gardening, horseback riding, even sneezing as a cure for hiccups. <laughs> but other subjects as well. The loss of loved ones, the mystery of grief and sorrow, the importance of religion, and of course, the last thoughts, the final hopes of two old men, two great patriarchs for the family that they had helped to found and loved so deeply. It carries me back, Jefferson wrote about correspondence with his co-signer of the Declaration of Independence, to the times when, beset with difficulties and dangers, we were fellow laborers in the same cause, struggling for what is most valuable to man, his right to self-government. Laboring always at the same oar, with some wave ever ahead threatening to overwhelm us, and yet passing harmless. We rode through the storm with heart and hand. Was their last, last gift to us, this lesson in brotherhood, in tolerance for each other, this insight into America's strength as a nation? And when they both died on the same day within hours of each other, that date was July 4th, 50 years exactly after that first gift to us, the Declaration of Independence. My fellow Americans, it falls to us to keep faith with them and all the great Americans of our past. Believe me, if there's one impression I carry with me after the privilege of holding for five and a half years the office held by Adams and Jefferson and Lincoln, it is this, that the things that unite us America's past of which we're so proud, our hopes and aspirations for the future of the world and this much-loved country, these things far outweigh what little divides us. And so tonight we reaffirm that Jew and Gentile, we are one nation under God, that black and white, we are one nation indivisible, that Republican and Democrat, we are all Americans. Tonight, with heart and hand, through whatever trial and travail, we pledge ourselves to each other and to the cause of human freedom, the cause that has given light to this land and hope to this world. Ronald Reagan. Thine, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, the high and mighty ruler of the universe, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee, with thy favor to behold and bless thy servant, the President of the United States, and all others in authority. And so replenish them with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that they may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. And do them plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant them in health and prosperity long to live. And finally, after this life, to attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> o God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for thy holy church universal that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led in the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in the righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are desired or joy. that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogancy, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. And you, with the spirit of wisdom, those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that, through obedience to thy law, we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All which we ask, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior, the Prince of Peace, give us grace seriously to lay to heart the great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away all hatred and prejudice, and whatsoever else may hinder us from godly union and concord. That as <clears throat> there is but one body and one spirit, and one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so we may be all of one heart and of one soul, united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and charity, and may with one mind and one mouth glorify thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jory. O merciful God, giver of life and health, bless we pray thee thy servant Jory and those who administer to her of thy healing gifts, that she may be restored to health of body and of mind, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, whose fatherly care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech thee graciously to behold and bless those whom we love, now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body, and grant that both they and we, drawing near to thee, may be bound together by thy love in the communion of thy Holy Spirit and in the fellowship of thy saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O most loving Father, who willest us to give thanks for all things, to dread nothing but the loss of thee, and to cast all our care on thee, who cares for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that love which is immortal, and which thou hast manifested unto us in thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Almighty God, Heavenly Father, who hast blessed us with the joy and care of children, give us light and strength so to train them, that they may love what sort of things are true and pure and lovely and of good report, following the example of their Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I bow my knee before thee, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. I beseech thee to grant to my flock, according to the riches of thy glory, that they be strengthened with might by thy spirit in the inner man, that Christ might dwell in their hearts by faith, that they, being rooted and grounded in love, might be able to comprehend with all sense what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that they might be filled with all fullness of thee. I beseech thee, who are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think, according to the power that worketh in me. Unto thee be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now let us continue together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men, particularly to those who desire now to offer up their praises and thanksgivings for thy late mercies vouchsafed unto them. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be a faint and thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Our processional hymn is hymn number 542, Jesus Shall Reign Where'er the Sun. And I think it's probably a different tune than the hymnal, but should be the right words. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.